All right, so we um, we shall continue here. Okay. So the IQR and the range, they tell us the spread of the data. They tell us whether the numbers, the values are close to each other or if they're far apart. Okay. So the ages of seventh grade students will have a small spread. Okay. Within a certain grade, the ages will probably be very similar. Okay. But if you look at an entire school, the ages will have much more spread because you might have some young students and older students, the ages are more spread out. Okay? So um, let's think here. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think, uh, just some examples. Okay. So I'll give you uh, I'll give you two groups, and just in your mind, think of which group might have more spread or less spread than the other. Okay. Alright. So we will say. So which has more spread? Um, we're looking at uh, <coughs> cost. Okay, so we'll say cost of um, iPhone. Cost of an iPhone versus cost. So we'll say cost of latest model iPhones. Cost of versus cost of uh, latest model Android phones. Are we are we familiar with this? Is this example even going to work? Yeah. We have no idea. Okay, so think in your head which one has more spread versus the other. Okay. Which which one has more spread? Android. iPhones or Android phones? Android. I would say the Android phones have more spread. Okay. I would say this. My argument is this. Okay. So cost of the latest model iPhone. There's really only like one model iPhone, right? And it's going to be like 600 bucks. The latest one is only huh? one. There's huh? only one latest. Yeah, there's only one latest generation <laughs> iPhone. Uh, they might offer it in two different sizes, okay, in terms of storage space. And it might be like 600 bucks or 700 bucks or something like that, right? So latest model iPhone, 600 to $700, if I'm not uh, mistaken, something around there. Okay, new without contract. Um, okay, Android phones, new phones without contract can range anywhere from uh, I think like 149 to uh, 700. Okay, possibly even more. So like the HTC One M8, I think it's like a six or seven hundred dollar phone, or as they, they do have new phones that are sub-$200 uh, Android phone, okay? So I would say this has more, you can just, from the range alone, and just in terms of all the other things, right? There's only one latest generation iPhone, and then in terms of latest Android phones, there's probably like 30 different models, right? There's a whole bunch, okay? That are still like considered latest generation. Um, Okay, what about, uh, mm, okay, um, heights of, uh, heights of, 
horse jockeys. They're all about five feet to five three ish, some, some, some taller. So you have a much smaller range. It's, it's difficult to be a successful horse jockey and uh, be tall. Okay, just because. Well, if you're taller, you usually weigh more, and, uh, and that's going to slow down the horse, right? <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, About weight, weights of uh, baseball players versus uh, weights of NASCAR drivers. Maybe people don't know this. More spread. Baseball yeah, baseball players will have more spread. You got skinny baseball players, and you got big baseball players, okay? You got uh, people known for their speed, people known for their hitting ability, okay? As for NASCAR drivers, because of rules and regulations, the NASCAR drivers all aim to be a certain weight because uh, I think the total weight of the car has to be a certain amount, including the driver, but they allow a certain amount. And, uh, whatever, okay. They all end up being around the same way. There's no advantage to being a light NASCAR driver. So. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's a little bit about uh, spread, and uh, there's some like, more examples in the book, just to kind of get you to picture that. And then, so we'll talk about standard deviation and variation, which are pretty much, uh, these are just another way to measure spread, okay? So the standard deviation is another way to measure spread, like the range, like the IQR. is the middle 50%. The standard deviation, a typical uh, working definition is what is the typical distance a point is from the mean, okay? So it can be thought of as the typical distance from the mean. So let's think of 
Let's go back to our uh, seventh grade students. And the, their ages were 11, 12, 12, and 13. Okay, so if I draw a number line and make a dot plot, the dot plot would look like this. A dot at 11, three dots at 12, and one dot at 13. Two. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 11, 12, 12, 12, 13, but whatever. Okay. 11, 12, 12, 13, so yeah. Uh, okay. So I've got four seventh graders. This is, uh, these are their ages. So the mean of these four numbers is 12. Okay? So just imagine drawing a line right at 12. How far is this data point from 12? It's one unit away. How far is this data point from 12? No, 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 this one. How far is it from 12? It's on 12, so there, the distance there is zero. The distance for this guy is zero, and the distance for this guy is one. one. Okay, so our distances are one, zero, zero, and one, okay? And it's technically, this one is one below. So negative one, zero, zero, and one, okay? Now because of, the, there's this weird, uh, we'll get to it. We just say, if those are the four distances, we got one that's one lower, two that have a distance of zero, and one that's one unit away. What could be thought of as the typical distance, okay? You know, something in between that, right? or something like that, okay? Well, it gets a little bit weird in terms of the definition of the standard deviation, so we'll talk about the, the calculation there, but you can think of all, all of your points in the data have a certain distance from the mean. They might be located at the mean, <laughs> they might be different from the mean, some are going to be close and some are going to be far away, okay? And if we think of, let's say, um, the group of all students, So the standard deviation, kind of, you can think of it as the typical distance from the mean. <laughs> so the seventh graders have less spread. They're going to have a smaller standard deviation, whereas the students from K through 12 have more spread and will have a larger standard deviation. Okay? The typical distance here is larger typical distance there is much smaller. Is this concept okay? All right, because standard deviation is one of those terms that's thrown out, thrown around a lot, and people are intimidated by the term. But it's the topic, the concept is not that scary. You just have to think of it as maybe the typical distance from the mean. Okay, it's an idea of spread, and this is how we calculate it. This formula looks a little bit. Intimidating, 
Okay, but step by step we'll break it down and it's not too bad. Okay, so this is the formula for calculating the standard deviation. Formulas also on um, page eighty six, not to worry. Okay, step by step. First thing, find the mean. The next step <coughs> is calculate the distance from the mean for all points. to kind of find the average by adding them up, add, add those up, and divide by n minus 1. Okay, so to find the average, you would just add those up and divide by n, but we're doing something a little bit weird. We add those up and we divide by n minus 1. And lastly, take the square root. This is two words. Square each of those distances. Okay? And we all know the difference between squaring and square root, right? What does it mean to square? You multiply a number by itself. And the square root is what number multiplied by itself equals this, right? Okay? So 9 squared is 9 times 9, 81. <coughs> the square root of 9 is 3, because what times what equals 9? 3. And if you square a negative number, what happens to it? It becomes positive, right? Okay. That's that's important because some sometimes when on your calculator, if you type in negative four squared, okay, what is negative four squared? Positive sixteen, right? But on your calculator, if you do negative four squared, it might tell you it's negative 16. What? Is the calculator wrong? You can try it on your calculator. Let's see if this does it, okay? If you know how to enter negative numbers. Negative 4 squared. Is it negative 16? It's positive 16. So why is my calculator saying this? Why does your calculator say this? Huh? Order of operations, right? What happens? How, how do you do order? Of, what's the order of operations? Parentheses, exponents, which is squaring, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, right? PEMDAS. So you do the exponent first, and then they see the negative sign as a multiplication step. Okay? So the exponent first means we do the 16 first, and then we apply the positive or negative sign, which it sees as a multiplication step, and that's why it's giving you negative 16. So 
just make sure if you're going to do that, you do negative four parentheses squared, mm -hmm. and that will give you positive 16. Okay. Yes? Uh, which case is it that you would put like a fraction, so like one over, like to make it positive? Like a negative, would it be negative square root? You would like, like would that equal one over 16 or just? Like 8 to the negative 2 is yeah, 1 over 8 squared. Square. Oh, oh, okay. Negative exponent, yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Just okay. uh, negative exponents yeah. mean um, division by yeah. that number. Okay. Well, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Okay? All right. So let's, uh, let's calculate the standard deviation for this set of four numbers for the seventh graders. And then I'll leave it to you guys to calculate the standard deviation of these four numbers for um, the K through 12. Okay? Alright, so these are my four numbers. And we already found that the distances are negative 1, 0, 0, 1. But let's, uh, we will do this step by step. Okay, so my numbers are 11, 12, 12, and 13. First, I've got to calculate the mean. So I add up my four numbers and I get 28 and I divide by, not 28, I get 48 and I divide by 4 and I get a mean of 12. So that's step one. Find the mean, my x bar is 12. The second step, calculate the distance from the mean for all four points, for all data points. So one way, and I'm going to just subtract 12 from each of these numbers. And I get negative 1, I get a distance of 0, a distance of 0, and a distance of 1. Which we did over here already, right? We created the dot plot and we said, what's the distance? Okay. I'm just doing it over here in numeric form because some people will prefer that. If you can do it from a dot plot or just looking at the numbers, you can do that. It doesn't matter. Okay. Next thing, square each of those distances. So what is negative 1 squared? Positive, right? So these are my squares. 0 squared is 0, 0 squared is 0, and 1 squared is 1. Okay, so these are the numbers squared. Add those up. Okay, what's 1 plus 0, 0 plus 1? Add it up, I get 2. Then I divide by n minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to do 2 divided by, what's n minus 1? Um, three. 3, right? I've got 4 numbers, so n minus 1 is 3. So I divide by n minus 1, and I get 0. 0.66667, okay? And then lastly, I take the square root of that. Square root is like point uh, eight something something. I don't know. In my Copy 
Alright, I'll let you copy that down. Wait, is that the X with the bar? Is it me or me? It's me. Or the divide by n minus one. You got the two because um, I'm taking the you added the two up, yeah. right? And then, but what's the divide by three? Like, how do we get that? N minus one is three. Oh, it's three. Oh, you're trying to square root of six. Oh. All right, are we ready? Okay, so we're ready to do the find the standard deviation of these four numbers. And I'll do it nice and slow so everybody is good. Okay. okay. We're ready? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So here are my four numbers. They are the ages of four different students. Okay. And you want to know the standard deviation of the ages of these four students. You know... I worry that we're too worried about calculating. We, we do have to learn how to calculate this, but the overall concept of standard deviation is the most important part, okay? All right, what is the mean of these four numbers? Yes, 12. Is everybody okay with that the mean of these four numbers is 12? Yes. Yes, okay, I just added those four up and I divided by four, right? Yeah. So that is step one. The mean of those four numbers is 12. What does step two say? Calculate the distance from the mean for all points. Okay? So how far is 8 from 12? Negative 4. It's 4 units away, right? 4 units smaller. And how did I get that? I can just do 8 minus 12, and I get negative 4. Again, okay, I can do this for all four points. And I get negative 2 minus 12, I get 2, and I get minus 12, and I get uh, 4. So far, so good. Yes. Anybody lost or too fast for them? That's okay, good. All right, now I'm going to square each of these distances. So eight is four units away from 12. What is four units squared? 16, so I'm gonna square these distances, okay? Everything becomes positive, right? So this becomes 16. This becomes four, this becomes four, and this becomes 16. <coughs> Are we okay? Yes. Is anybody lost? Okay, <coughs> where did I lose you? <coughs> the minus the 12? Okay, uh, so what, what's 8 minus 12? What, what's 8 minus 12? Negative 4, right? What's 10 minus 12? Okay, 14 minus 12? And 16 minus 12? 4. Okay, that's how I got. I, it's just the, I'm just sub doing subtraction. Just doing subtraction. Okay, so and then, and then I squared 4 and I got 16, and I squared 2 and I got 4. Okay. And then, okay, now I'm going to add those up, right? So what's 16 plus 4? plus 4 plus 16? 40. 40. 40, right? So I add those up, and I get 40. And is that okay? Yeah. All right. And then I'm going to divide by n minus 1. So what is n? What is my n? n is my sample size. 4. And I got 4. This is my sample size. Okay, because inevitably something is going to So that is n is 4. So 40, so divide by n minus 1 is going to be 40, which is the previous number, divided by 3. Okay, and that's going to give me 13.33333. Is that okay? Yes. And then the last step, I'm going to take the square root. Three point seven or something. Forty divided by three and a square of that. Three point six five one five. And that's S. And that is S. That's my standard deviation. 
okay? So the standard deviation of the seventh grade ages is 0.8165. The standard deviation of these four students is 3.6515. Larger standard deviation means the numbers are more spread out than over here. That's the important thing. Large standard deviation, more spread. Small standard deviation, less spread. Write that somewhere on your paper. Okay? You gotta know the steps, you gotta be able to find the standard deviation. But if you can find the standard deviation, but you can't tell me that large standard deviation means more spread and small standard deviation means less spread, I feel like we have lost the, the war. Okay. <laughs> So that is standard deviation, okay? Variation is very similar concept. Variation is just the number that you get before you take the square root, okay? So the variation of this set is 13.33. The variation of this set is 0.6667, okay? So right before you take the square root, that number is called the variation. Write that somewhere up on the board, also. So the variation uh, is the number at the end of step five. Before you take the square root. Basically, standard deviation and variation, they go hand in hand. Did I? Yes, I have a question. How many um, six, six do you want on the test? Uh, I recommend four. At least four. Okay. But you keep how, you know. Sometimes in my homework videos, I go down to two or three. Okay. But a rule of thumb, four is a good number. Okay. Sometimes you need more, sometimes you need less. something known as a z-score, okay? So standard deviation tells us kind of the typical distance a point is from the mean, okay? It's an idea of spread, but its definition of spread is what's the typical distance something is from the mean, okay? We can use the standard deviation as kind of this baseline guide for um, things that are highly unusual, okay? So a z-score tells us how far a number is from the mean in standard deviations, okay?
that okay? All right, so let's try this out. What if I told you to the international students because we're going to do feet and inches. But have you guys gotten used to feet and inches yet? International students or do we still hate it? Kind of. Okay. Alright. So I will say the U.S. average average uh, U.S. males average height a little bit tiny, tiny bit shorter than that, but just for simplicity's sake, we will say 70 inches. That's 5 foot 10. Okay? And for simplicity, we will say the standard deviation is 3 inches. Is our answer? 73 inches. Is that okay? Who is it? No. Okay, that's all right. Good. A Z score is how many standard deviations a point is from the mean. Okay? So to have a Z score of positive one means what? It means the person's height is one standard deviation above the mean. Is that okay? So Z score one means the height is one standard deviation above the mean. Okay? What is our mean? The mean height is 70 inches. A standard deviation is three inches. So if we are one standard deviation above the mean, how tall is that person? That person is 3 inches above 70 inches, so that person is 73 inches. How's that? Question? Yes. That's, that was probably going to be my next question, but we'll change that up, okay? So if somebody's z-score is positive 2, that person's height would be 76 inches, okay? What if somebody has a z-score? Of negative 1.5. That means they are one and a half standard deviations <coughs> below the mean. Don't shout it out. Write a number down on your paper. What is the height? Okay, our answer would be 65.5 inches. Is that is that okay? All right. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Right. The mean is 70. Right. They are one and a half standard deviations below the mean. So I'm going to subtract off one and a half times three. Right. Each standard deviation is three inches. We are going to go one and a half times that down. So we're going to do 70 minus 4.5, and I get 65. Five inches. Question. 
there is a formula, but I want you guys to get comfortable with the concept first, okay? Because if we're not comfortable with the concept, the formula is just going to ruin us, I guess, you know? Okay. Um, because so the problem with, for, in my opinion, formulas are great, don't get me wrong, but sometimes we just get into modes where we throw numbers into a thing and it spits a number out, and we have no, like, we're not connecting this number that it spits out back to reality, okay? So, if we understand the concept, we can tell if the number that spits out makes sense or if it doesn't make sense, okay? So, one thing you should know is that if somebody is taller than 70 inches, their z-score is going to always be what? If somebody is taller than 70 inches, the z-score will always be what? Positive. Positive, right? Because if they are above the mean, above 70 inches, they will have a positive z-score. If the somebody is shorter than 70 inches, you will have a negative z-score. Okay? So, a taller than the mean or a higher than the mean always means the z-score is positive. Shorter than the mean or lower than the mean, z score is negative. All right? And if you can always remember that, that will help you avoid a lot of mistakes where I see students, they just throw numbers into a formula, but they get something a little bit mixed up and they get the negative version, negative number when it should obviously be positive, but because they're not even checking to see if the number makes sense. They go along with the negative, and I can't give you points for that. Okay, if somebody is 60, let's say, um, if a man is, let's say, 66 inches, okay, so five foot six, what is his z-score? Okay. I erased it, but his z-score again tells us how far we are from the mean in standard deviation. So don't shout out the answer, but write down a number on your paper. score here? Negative 1.333, 1. 1. right? Is that okay? How did, how did I get that? Who, who did not get this? Or, okay, good. Thank you for saying that so we can, uh, we know that we're going. All right. How tall, how, how far, how many inches is someone who's 66 inches from the mean? Four, four. four inches, right? So someone who's 66 inches is four inches shorter than the mean, okay? But a standard deviation is three inches. So how many standard deviations is that four inches? I do four divided by three and I get 1.33, okay? So I'm gonna just break this down. So 66 inches is four inches below the mean 70 inches, okay? Each standard deviation is 3 inches, okay? So 66 inches is 4 divided by 3 uh, standard deviations below the mean. And so 66 has a z-score of negative 4 over 3, which is negative 1.333. We 
have to understand this conceptually. And, you know, some of us, maybe we learn division, we learn long division, and uh, we know how to divide numbers, but maybe, maybe the concept of division is still a little shaky for some of you, okay? And that's okay, but I, I hope this makes sense, okay? Everything I've written here. All right, now I'm going to put the formula up on the board, and you guys are going to like the formula because it's much easier. Okay, but conceptually, we've got to understand this conceptually, all right? The z-score is x, whatever number you have, minus the mean, x bar, divided by the standard deviation, s. And you can see that's exactly what we did here, all right? If a man is 66 inches, the x is 66, all right? My mean is 70 inches, and the standard deviation <coughs> is 3 inches, okay? So if I plug that into my z-score, I'm going to get z is equal to 66 minus 70 divided by 3. Right? And that's all we did. 66 is 4 inches below the mean of 70, okay? So I did 66 minus 70, and I get negative 4. Each standard deviation is 3 inches, so I'm doing negative 4 divided by 3, and I get negative 1.333, okay? So you can just plug numbers into the formula, and it will spit out your z-score, okay? And that's great. But we go through this so we understand the concept <laughs> and rather than just blindly throwing numbers into something and hoping it gives us the answer. But inevitably, some of you will just blindly throw numbers into the formula and hope it gives you the right thing, okay? And, uh, and, it, and it probably will. Others of you, you know, but if you, you know, if you mix it up, right? Some of you might do 70 minus 66. Okay? What happens if you get the x and the x bar mixed up, right? Mm -hmm. And if you do 70 minus 66 divided by 3, you're going to get positive 1.33. Okay? And you'll say, oh, that, that's fine. Why? This is wrong, though. Okay? Why is it wrong? Because it's positive. Because it's positive. Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's, it's wrong because, right, we know that a man, if somebody is below the mean, their z score <coughs> has to be negative. Right? And if you do something like this, and you get positive 1.33, somebody, something in your brain should say, wait a second, I'm getting a positive z-score, yet my person is below the mean, something is wrong, okay? That need, there needs to be a flag here, okay? Yes? Are we going to have to solve for x? Yes. And we did already. We've already done that, okay? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we have to solve for x, right? Over here I said, oh, I, see. I said, uh, if the z-score is 1, how tall is the man? Okay? If the z-score is 1, how tall is the man? We solved for x. You didn't even realize it. But we solved for x. Listen up, you guys. And some of you guys are talking, and, uh, and I would just appreciate it if you would not. All right. If our z-score is 1, how tall is the man, okay? You can use the formula to get your answer because some of you guys love formulas, all right? So in this case, my z-score is 1. I don't know x. I don't know the height of the man. I do know that my mean is... Oh, I put it six there. It's an s. Um, I do know that my mean is 70 and that my s is 3, okay? So solving back for x, I multiply both sides by 3, and I get 3 is equal to x minus 70, and then I add 70 to both sides, and I get 73 <coughs> equals x. Alright? And we got that, okay? But if you can think, keep it in your head conceptually, you know, you can, you can do it this way. You don't have to rely on the formulas. The formulas are useful, they're helpful, Okay. But you have to understand the underlying concepts, otherwise the formulas lead you astray. Or 
Is that, is that okay? Z scores. All right. So the beauty of Z scores is that now we can use Z scores to compare apples to oranges. Okay? Because if we have a standard deviation, that gives us an idea of how much the spread, what what the spread is like in that data set, and then the z-score will tell us how extreme or not extreme a certain number is. Okay. So. Um, These are just approximate numbers, they're not exactly this. Okay, and let's say um, you're going through life and you see a uh, woman who is uh, six feet one, okay, so a, a tall woman. A tall woman, she is six foot one or 73 inches tall. Okay. You also see a, a tall man. And let's say he is 6'4". Um, okay. Or uh, we'll say 6'5". We'll say 6'5". So a tall man and a tall woman. Okay, so 6'5 would be 77 inches. All right, which is more extreme? Is the woman who is six foot one, is she more of an extraordinary thing, or is the man who's six foot five more extraordinary? Okay, well, you guys all say the woman, and, uh, and I would agree with you, but we can use z-scores to make that comparison, okay? So intuitively, because you have lived through life and you have seen the heights of men and the heights of women, in your brain, there's something that says the six foot one woman is more extreme or more unusual than the six foot five man. Okay? But not everything in life you have as much experience with, right? I could say, what's more unusual? An orange that weighs 390 grams or an apple that weighs uh, 415 grams? And you'd be like, I don't know, right? Or do you know? Okay. Well, so here we can, what we can do is we can find calculate the z-score for the man and the z-score for the woman, okay? So see, using the data that I've provided here, see if you can find the z-score for the man and the z-score for the woman. Okay, try that out, I will give you a couple minutes. So the z-score for the man and the z-score for the woman. And I've provided all the data you need
you guys are still working. Do you guys get 2.33 for the z-score demand? Yes. Okay, great. So, this is just taking, we can just use the formula, okay? We just want to know how many standard deviations is this person from the mean, okay? The mean for men is what? 70, so x bar is 70. How tall is this man? 77, so my x is 77. The mean x bar is 70, and the standard deviation is three. Okay, so I do 77 minus 70 divided by three. All right, and if you're gonna punch this into your calculator, Make sure you solve the top before you um, do the division, otherwise it might do order of operations, and you're gonna get 2.333. Is there, are there any questions on that? Okay, and I just do the same thing for the women, or for the woman. Her height is 73 inches, the mean is 64 inches, and the standard deviation is 2.5 inches, okay? So I do this, I get 9 over 2.5, and I get 3.6. The z-score is 3.6 versus z-score of 2.33. This z-score is larger or further away from zero, so this is more extreme. So what the, the z-scores have revealed, what intuitively we have already had a sense of, okay? Is that okay? Good, all right. So next week on the quiz, you might see something like that where I will give you a few measurements, some means and some standard deviation, and I'll ask you to make a comparison using z-scores, okay? Are women 
one standard deviation of the mean. 95% about 95% are within two standard deviations of the mean. And nearly all on your test, you'd be really happy, I think. Okay? About 99.7%, so nearly all, are within three standard deviations. So, using that rule of thumb, I will U.S. The height of males in the United States is unimodal and symmetric, and I'm telling you approximately the mean is 70, and the standard deviation is approximately 3. We'll just use this, and we will illustrate this, okay? So within one standard deviation of the mean, what are the boundaries of heights for men within one, that are one standard deviation <coughs> within the mean, okay? So what that means is the mean is at 70 inches, right? So if we go one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below, about two-thirds of men, about 68%, are within that bracket of heights, okay? So that would go from, what are, what are my height boundaries? 67 inches to 73 inches, right? So if I do 70 inches plus 3 and 70 inches minus 3, I get from 67 to 67 ish to 73 ish inches, about 68% are between the heights um, of 67, so 5 foot 7 inches and 6 foot 1 inch. Okay? And does that match our intuitive sense? Or about two thirds of US males between 5 7 and 6 1? That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Okay? So if I do two standard deviations, I would do 70 plus 2 times 3, and 70 minus 2 times 3. So that takes me to 76 inches and 64 inches. Okay? So about 95% are between. inches and 76 inches. Okay. Is that good? And then about 99.7 are between what? 5, 1 and 6, 7. Okay. Yes. Question. Is that a 2 plus 3 or 2 times 3? 2 times 3. Two standard deviations. do it for the last one, but I figure you guys can do it for the last one. Right? If you understand it for the first two, you'll understand it for the first two. Okay? So, almost everyone is within three standard deviations, but not everyone, okay? You're still going to have some people who are extremely tall, extremely short, or people, you know, whatever we're measuring, whether it's IQs or, or anything else, you will have people outside of three standard deviations, okay? Inches to 67 inches, okay? But if they say it's 
If I tell you a man is 67 inches, it doesn't register as quickly as 5'7", right? In, in my opinion. All right, one last topic, okay? Just hang on for a second, and then, uh, and then you guys can go, all right? And this is box plots. Okay, and you will see a question on box plots, so, so pay attention still. Okay, so ways to dis to summarize numeric data, we've seen histograms and dot plots, okay? And then the book talks about stem and leaf plots, but don't worry about those, but you do need to know box plots. Okay. So you know, you go know histograms, you know dot plots, and now I will introduce to you box plots. Box plots are just quick summaries, okay? They're like Cliff Notes versions of data, okay? And a box plot looks something like this. This is a box plot. So what does this mean? This is the box, okay? There's three vertical, there's three lines that define the box. The first one is Q1, and this edge is Q3, and in the middle we have the median, okay? And all of these box, all box plots, because it's numeric, will be against the number line, right? So maybe. Okay. So based on this box plot, what is approximately the value of Q1? <coughs> Yeah, I'd say a 67-ish, okay? Something around there. What is the approximate value of the median? 73. Yeah, 73, 72, whatever, okay? Q3? 92. 92, something, okay. These are all just, these are all-ish numbers, okay? Based on that, okay? This line, this is called a whisker, and it extends to the smallest point in the data set uh, that's not considered an outlier. All right. So that is approximately what? Approximately 50, okay? Do I have any uh, outliers or any, well, here, let's go over here. Okay, same thing over here. This is the largest point in my data set that's not an outlier. So that might be like 129. represented with circles or stars, these are outliers. Okay, they are still part of our data set. So what is the largest value in my data set? Yeah, my, the largest value, the max, is maybe like 150, maybe like 140, uh, 149, or something like that. Okay, that's this point. This is my largest point, okay? What's the largest point I have that's not an outlier? Yeah, like 129, 130, something around there. What is the smallest data point in my data set? 50. Do I have any outliers in, in the small direction? No, okay? So my minimum is like 50, okay? So what's my range? 149 minus 50, so my range is the max minus the min, would be 149 minus 50, I have a range of like 99, okay? 
Is that okay? We've talked about the IQ, uh, Q3 and Q1. We said it's 92 and 67. So what is my IQR? Yeah, 92 minus 67, so that's what, 25, okay? So the IQR is the width of the box, okay? <coughs> All right, do you guys remember what Q1 and Q3 represent? Mm -hmm. The first quartile and the third quartile, all right? So if I say, ask you this question, what percentage of my data is larger than 92? What is your answer? Don't, don't shout it out, just think about it. Looking at this box plot alone, let's just say these are the numbers, 67, 73, 92. What percentage of my data is larger than 92? Okay, go ahead and tell me the answer. Nobody does? 25%, right? Q3 is the third quartile, right? So Q3 is the third quartile, which means three quarters are smaller than Q3, and how much is larger than Q3? 25%, right? One quarter. Is that, is that okay? Okay? So if Q3 is 92, that means 75% of my data is smaller than 92, and 25% is larger than 92. It, it, all I'm saying, I'm just reiterating the definitions of Q1 and Q3 and median, okay? So Q3 is 92, that's my third quartile. The definition of Q3, you should already have this in your notes, is that three-fourths of your data is smaller than Q3, which means one-fourth is larger than Q3. That should already be in your notes. So it's just applying what you've learned so that means three-fourths of my data is smaller than 92, and one-fourth is larger. Okay. <coughs> so what percentage of my data is between, is in this narrow range of 67 to 73? So there's only, it, that's, a, that's a small range, right? 73 to 67, 67 to 73. What percentage of my data is between those two numbers? Sixty-seven is Q1. Seventy-three is my median. <coughs> so how much? What percentage of my data is between sixty-seven and seventy-three? I don't know. How do we know? How do we know? Twenty-five percent. Twenty-five percent. Okay. What does Q1 is what? It's my twenty-fifth percentile, right? Q1 means one fourth is smaller. Right? So one fourth of my data is smaller than 67. The median is 73. How much of my data is smaller than 73? Half of my data, right? So half of my data is smaller than 73. Half is smaller, or 25% smaller than 67. So how much is in between 67 and 73? 25%. Is that okay? Okay, so what percentage is between 73 and 92? 25%. What percentage is between 67 and 92? 50%, okay? So you should be able to look at a box plot and be able to report things like that, okay? Because it's all based on, you just got to know the definitions of Q1, the median, Q3, what those mean, and you got to be able to go back and forth between the numbers and a box plot and all of that, okay? All right, so... Uh, Good luck, guys, as you... Uh